Oh, look at that shelf. That's starting to get a bit of a mess. I should probably tidy that up. Probably won't. This is a budget wide angle lens designed for Sony APS-C crop cameras. It's from a company called Brighton Star. It's a 12 millimeter focal length with the equivalent after your 1.5 times crop of 18 mils. I've been using it recently on the Sony a6400, but it'll also work on the 6100, 6400, 6500, 6600, 6000, 5100. There's so many Sony APS-C crop cameras, but it'll work on all of those. You can put onto a Sony full frame camera like the A7 III, put it into full frame mode, and it will be wider, but it'll have horrible, depending on the look you're going for, vignetting. So probably not usable on a full frame camera. If you put it into crop mode on a full frame camera, it will work just fine, just you're only getting 10 megapixels, at least on the A7 III. Because it is a manual focus lens, you will need to turn on the setting in your camera to release shutter without lens. The camera will not detect this as being a lens on the camera, so it won't work unless you turn on that setting. Because it's not recognized by the camera, it will not record the aperture information in your EXIF data. So if you wanted to go back afterwards, we're gonna go into Lightroom in a bit, go over some photos. If you wanted to do that, you're not gonna be able to see the aperture settings that you used. It goes from F2 to F22, so it's gonna be really good for low light, have nice background separation. And then if you wanna go all the way up to F22 for big, wide, bright landscape shots, bright as in time of day bright, you can do that. This lens does have a variety of uses, but one which I actually quite enjoyed shooting with was astrophotography. I'll show you some images in a bit. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to astrophotography, but today's sponsor, Skillshare, actually has an entire course covering it if you wanna know a little bit more. So thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creators. They have over 25,000 courses. Skillshare covers everything from business to attempting to play the guitar. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I'm not that great of a guitar player. I'm completely self-taught and I just like to play random songs. I like to try. Also, Skillshare can probably help you with playing guitar too. So if you want to learn a little bit more about astrophotography from someone that knows a lot more than me, then check out the video on Skillshare. A premium membership of Skillshare actually works out to be quite cheap. It's less than $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, allowing me to make these videos for you guys. You may as well get something from it too. So if you click the link down below, Skillshare will give you two months free. So you can go and learn as much as you want free for two months. Give it a go. Let's quickly go over the build quality of this lens. Now it does remind me a lot of the Rokinon 12 millimeter when I used to use that. It actually has some pretty good weight to it. It's a solid little lens. Like it's tiny, really, really small, but it's entirely made of metal and it's very, very solid. Even the lens hood is made of metal. I've never seen a lens hood made of metal before. And the lens hood actually screws on, which is very strange. Never seen that. Normally it's just a click. I guess it's a nice feature because it means the lens hood can't come off easily. The bad thing I guess is if it becomes a little bit loose, it now spins around. So you have to make sure that that's always tight. The aperture ring is not a clicky aperture ring. It's a declicked smooth aperture ring. So to go from F2 to F22, you literally just turn it there and you probably can't even hear any sound. It's, it's pretty quiet. And I like that. A smooth aperture ring actually has a pretty beneficial use in certain situations. I've done a whole video on that, which I'll link up there. Because of its weight compared to its size, you'll actually feel like this is a really solid, well-built lens. And to be honest with you, it kind of is. It does feel very well built, especially for its size. As I say in previous videos, weight is normally a good indication of quality, at least for me, and it's got good weight for its size, so good quality. The focus ring is firm. Maybe a little bit too firm for my liking. It's smooth and it's consistent, but it's definitely firm. I did actually find that the difference between this being in focus and out of focus, especially at lower apertures like F2, F2.8, is really hard. It's a very, very narrow kind of range of focus. So you can go from being in focus to out of focus with the tiniest little immeasurable turn. And that makes it difficult to focus. Even if you're using focus peaking, even if you're using focus assist, uh, where you zoom in with the camera directly, it's quite hard to focus. With the A6400's EVF and screen not being the best as well, they're not the highest quality out there compared to some other ones, it definitely makes it even harder to focus with this lens. So bear that in mind, it's not the easiest lens to focus with. That being said, when you do get it focused, right in the middle, it's really sharp. For a lens that costs as much as this costs, it's a really sharp, good looking lens. That being said, when you do get this in focus, in the middle, it's really sharp. For a $180 lens, it's US, 
I was quite impressed by how sharp this is directly in the middle. So I took a bunch of photos, I popped into Lightroom, made a couple of little changes, nothing too drastic. So I'm gonna go over those with you right now, just so you can see how the images look, sharpness, how the bokeh shows up, that kind of thing. So let's go onto my screen. First, we have to do a couple of quick claps to sync my audio or allow me to sync my audio and post. I've got a lapel mic on right here. To my screen. All right, first image. So this is a shot of my dog just on the couch there and just to demonstrate the sharpness. So if we zoom into the eyes and the hairs there, I don't know why my screen's doing that black flickering thing. I really hope that doesn't show up on OBS. I apologize if it does. So pretty sharp right in the center there. What I wanna show you though, which I have noticed, look in the corners. It's definitely not sharp in the corners in any way. So you'll see that in some of the more, or some of the other images here. So again, just to demonstrate sharpness here, one of my dog. And as I mentioned before, you're not gonna be able to see any of your aperture settings here. So I did shoot a lot of these at the lower apertures just to demonstrate the bokeh a little bit more. So you can see your shutter speed, one 320th of a second. You can see your ISO which is settings from the camera, but you physically can't see the aperture. Nice and sharp there, right on the middle of the eye. But then you look at the edges and it's, it just kind of goes to shit pretty quick. This was uh, the other day, it snowed hugely overnight, so. You get a little bit of purple around the trees there. Doesn't look great uh, it's a cheap lens so i'm not expecting too much it's really bad here look at that in the center not really too too bad but around the corners definitely not great here's another example look nice and sharp but look at that look at how that look at this it's it's so bad from the center to the edge and yeah, that was definitely a shallower depth of field. I think it probably had that F2, but still, that's pretty terrible. Here's what it is, I guess. Much the same thing again. This was really cool, actually, the day that it snowed, because it still really hadn't... Autumn hadn't really gone. It's still around, and you can see. You don't often get to see the, the changing color of the leaves with the snow. Another one here of my dog. I just really liked the, uh, the snow, so I took advantage of it and got as many pictures as I, as I could, because the snow always looks good in images. I'm showing you these images, but uh, hopefully you're seeing things that you want to see, or maybe not, I guess. Chromatic aberration is pretty bad with this lens around the edges. In the middle, it's not too, too bad. Lots more snow. Here's one of my, uh, my daughter here, Harper. Look how sharp that is. For a $180 lens, in the middle, that is a very nice, sharp looking image. Really impressed with that, poor thing. She's got a cold right now. Bit of a snotty nose. Here was a great uh, example for you. So, sharp right there, looks good. And then you can come to, look at this. Look at the way that changes. The camera's almost in focus there, but then right here, look at it. It's so bad. But then you look at the middle and it's it, it looks good. I guess that's what you get with a cheaper lens, really. And for Astro, so these were some shots I was actually genuinely impressed with. So I have the benefit of being able to take these kinds of photos on the street. Like this is right in front of my house. So I don't have a lot of light pollution, and uh, this was about an eight second exposure, I think. Six second exposure. And uh, yeah, stars don't look great up there. They definitely become crosses, but in the middle, pretty good. For a $180 lens, that is entirely an acceptable image for Astro. Much similar, same thing there. You see in the distance there, uh, that is the light pollution we have. About six or seven miles away, that's a pretty big town there, Peterborough. And uh, flaring here. This was by luck, a car started coming down the road, quite far away in the distance, it was a few hundred meters away, but with the flaring on the lens. It's quite a bit of it. That looks cool though, nice color. 
And then I want to take one directly of the moon to show you the flaring there again. I mean, if we drop the highlights right down here, just an example for you to see. So this was an astro shot that I uh, did quite a bit of editing on, so I increased the clarity the, and uh, dehazed it here, so you can see the stars a little bit clearer. There's definitely a lot more noise in there now, but just as an example. So look, corner versus the middle. Stars actually look pretty good in the middle there. I'm not that disappointed with it. I'm actually quite impressed. This is a hard image to get sharp. These trees in the pitch black, even with bright monitoring, pretty hard to do. And then this was a, a live stream I was watching the other day with uh, Josh from Make Art Now and Gerald Undone. They did it on Friday night. Living the dream, Friday night live stream on YouTube. But look at this. So I didn't do this for the comments or whatever. It's just to show you an example because I noticed it when I was shooting with the, the camera. So in the middle, Right, nice and sharp, look at this. Look at that, that's bad. That's a really good example of uh, how the lens changes around the edges. And then this is how it would look if you put it on a full frame camera. So this is on my a7 III in crop mode and then this is in full frame mode. So you can see you get terrible vignetting around the edges there. And that's what's to be expected to be honest with you because you're using an APS-C lens uh, and then turning the full sensor on with the a7 III and it's capturing just bits that shouldn't be captured. So. That is uh, what happens when you put that on the full frame camera. So there we go, that is the images and uh, back to Chris for the rest of the video. So who's this lens for? A few people I can see using this lens out there for landscape photos, if that's something you're looking to get into or you just wanna pick up a cheap lens for landscape photos, you're normally gonna manual focus with landscape photos anyway. Uh, put this on a tripod and it's not gonna be a bad lens. Again, be aware of the softer corners, the softer edges, but the middle is gonna stay nice and sharp. So it's a good, cheap, I mean, $180 is not gonna be cheap for everybody, but comparatively to other lenses out there, 180 US for a pretty wide manually focusing lens for APS-C isn't that bad at all. As I mentioned at the start, this is gonna be a pretty decent lens for astrophotography, ignoring the fact that the edges are gonna be a little bit soft. F2, you're gonna to wanna to use for astrophotography on a tripod, manually focusing, using manual focus assist and focus peaking. You can zoom right into the stars, make sure that it's in focus, uh, and then take your shot, obviously with a self timer. Uh, if you wanna use bright monitoring as well, that's gonna be a good thing for you to use. Almost a secret feature that not a lot of people know about. Bright monitoring in a nutshell, and I've done a whole video on it, essentially brightens up your shot when you're in a very, very dark environment, just enough for you to be able to frame it up and then you turn it off and you can take your shot with your regular settings. I'll pop that video up there for you if you're interested in watching that one. So yeah, not gonna be a bad lens for astrophotography and a pretty cheap lens, 180 bucks to get you into the world of astrophotography. You're not gonna be using autofocus for astrophotography. So I would say, yeah, this is probably the best use for this lens. If you wanna get into astro, $180 or get you started. So thank you to Brighton Star. I keep wanting to say Bright Star. It would make more sense to call it Bright Star, but Brighton Star, thank you for sending this lens over to test out. If you're interested in picking this lens up, I'll pop some links down below for you and you can go ahead and pick it up if you want to. If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. And if you want to click subscribe down below, then go ahead. I'm not going to force you, but I would appreciate it. Other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video. See you later. The hood is up today because it's just becoming winter in Canada. It's cold and the furnace is in the room next door there, and when it's on and the heat's pumping, it creates a horrible ambient sound that I don't like, that you probably wouldn't like in the background of the video, so hoods up to keep you warm. That's why. And a lot of you ask about these hoodies, actually. It's a Canadian company, Polar Peace. I'll put a link down below for you if you're interested in that. I think there's a discount code I can get you as well, so I'll put that there for you. Because a lot of you ask. While I was filming, something just turned up in the mail. So let's see what it is. Ooh. Ooh. I'm excited to try this out. This is a big boy. This is a very big boy. Sigma 35mm f1.2. That is another whole video in itself.